I'm Rusty Ward, and I want power. Not in the abstract. I'm not talking about political power or the power of persuasion. I literally want to generate and channel power, electrical power, and I'm not alone. Cheyenne wants the abilities of Electro. Raptamon wants to be able to deliver shocks like Blanca. David wants to be able to manipulate electricity so he can destroy his enemies and charge his cell phone at the same time. And Megatom wonders if he can gain electrical powers through an electric eel mutation, but then says, all right, that one's stupid. Yes, that's just stupid. Or is it? We all have electricity constantly coursing through us. Our cells create and use electricity to maintain themselves, and our central nervous system uses electricity to communicate with the rest of our body. The electricity our body produces is much like the electricity created by a generator or a battery. A battery has different sections. One section contains a substance that has a positive charge, while another section contains a substance that has a negative charge. The negative charge is caused by an excess number of electrons. These sections are kept separate within the battery. When the two sections are connected by a circuit, say, a copper wire, the electrons are released out the bottom and pulled through the wire by the positive section of the battery because opposite charges attract. The same thing is happening within your cells, except instead of electrons, your cells are using ions. Those are negatively or positively charged atoms. Let's take a nerve cell as an example. The membrane of a neuron acts like the separator in a battery. It lets positively charged ions build up on the outside and negatively charged particles build up on the inside. When it receives a chemical trigger, it opens up and allows ions to move more freely. Because oppositely charged particles are attracted to each other, the positive ions rush in, creating an electrical current. Most electric potentials within living organisms range from one to a few hundred millivolts, but some animals have evolved bioelectric organs, which can deliver considerably stronger jolts of electricity. For those of you that don't know, a jolt is a standard unit of measurement equaling three wallops. These animals include electric stingrays, electric catfish, and electric jackalopes. I made up that last one, but the first two are totally real. And of course, let's not forget the undisputed king of electric shocks, the electric eel, which technically isn't so much an eel and is more closely related to a catfish. The electric eel has thousands of electricity producing cells called electrocytes, which are packed together into an organ appropriately called the electric organ. These cells can fire together to create a shock of 500 to 650 volts, enough to stun an adult human. Out of the water, the current is equivalent to one amp. So that's how electric eels do it. But could you, a human being, possibly do this? Well, according to David Levon at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, you can. Together with Zhen Shu, a former student, he designed an artificial electrogenic cell based on the physiology of the electric eel. The artificial cells can be implanted into a human being and used to power electrical devices like retinal implants or other prosthetics. The artificial cells are even able to outperform the eel cells, producing 28% more electricity. And it's Levon's intention to enable these cells to run on the same power source an eel's does, glucose, the energy derived from food. So you could eat a sandwich and recharge your iPad. Now there's a big difference between powering a small electrical device and incapacitating an opponent with a bioelectric stun blast. But an insulated bio battery the size of a four millimeter cube can produce three volts of electricity. That means that a plate that's slightly larger than five centimeters squared could hold enough batteries to create a charge the equivalent of an electric eel shock. You start going bigger than that, and black lightning's gonna start getting jealous. Levon and Shu published their first designs for an artificial electrocyte in 2008, and at the time, Levon suggested that they could start implanting these devices in as little as five years. So you might start seeing these devices popping up right about now. 
Last month, Audible.com offered to sponsor my How to Time Travel episode, and I asked you to help me out by going to audible.com slash rusty and downloading a free audiobook. My hope was that enough people who enjoy this series would grab a book, then Audible would be happy and want to come back and sponsor another episode. Well, they were happy and they did come back, so I want to say thank you to everyone that took the time to download a book. Many of you are creators as well, and you know how much time goes into making a video. It's a big help to have a sponsor support an episode, but it's an even bigger help to have such a supportive group of people watching my videos. This month, I'm listening to Ilium by Dan Simmons. If you like science fiction, you have to read Dan Simmons. He's incredible. I'd suggest starting with Hyperion, but if you're into other genres, he writes in horror and you can read Carrie and Comfort. And if you like historical fiction with a little fantasy thrown in, you can read The Terror. So if you enjoy this series and haven't downloaded your free audiobook yet, go to audible.com slash rusty and get one. They have over 150,000 titles, any type of literature you're into. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes. Check out some of the previous ones and let me know what superpower you want.